Welcome back to the podcast. We are here for the Singapore Grand Prix. I am Matt. I'm Tommy. And I am Jess. And we are back at it once again at the uh, in the. Cabot. Oh, we didn't oh. name it. You People said did name, name it. it. People, People did, did name, name it. it. What was the? I should have read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> we did read the comments. Yeah, Tommy did. was up until half was, two in the morning, so we'll let him off. Um, what did I think? My uh, oh yeah, I was supposed to say shout out to my dad at this point because he said give me a wink. So but give why, him would a I, wink. why would I wink <laughs> down the camera? Because just like, why is Matt winking? So hi, Dad. Thanks for watching. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so we've introduced <laughs> we not, everyone. <laughs> we should probably go through the comments and name Sha- the cupboard. Charlie yeah, cupboard. Yeah, come on. Cub- cupboard Charlie. Charlie the cupboard. There's something about sheds, and I was like, why this, Why sheds? Oh, yeah, because of... Uh, shed of dreams. What was the last race? Italian. Yeah. Monza. Call the room, vroom, vroom. Vroom, Is room. It? Vroom, room. The vroom, room. Oh, vroom, room. Got 298 likes, that is that is that the one that's won? Yeah. Well, if we're going by likes, yes. If yeah. we're going by choosing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, this isn't... A- <laughs> This isn't a room name, but I've just got to say DJ Big Penis one two three four <laughs> Jess looking fine. No, no. <laughs> what a username! <laughs> what? Oh God! What's the room that? should be called Tommy's Little <laughs> <laughs> Cubby. <laughs> what did it say? The room should be called Tommy's Little Cubby Hole. <laughs> oh. That one gets my vote. <laughs> Please tell me that wasn't DJ Big Penis. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Oh, God. The room's name should be... Oh, Raddy on it. God damn it. The room should... You should call the room the box, box, box. It's not not too bad. <laughs> I'm not reading that one out. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So what are we going to call it? The room room. Room if, room. Uh, room yeah, room. let's go with that because 298 likes. Welcome Next. to the yeah. room room. Well done. People Welcome to the room room. It sounds, Demo- it sounds, sounds a lot more snazzy than uh, you know, the cupboard. So uh, yeah. good good job. Good job, <laughs> everyone. My cubby hole. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough about your hole. Right. <laughs> Tell me two words of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that very nearly came out of my oh nose. Oh my god! We, I'd love to have seen a close up of that. Right, Tommy, three word ratio, be, please. You know what your three word ratio oh, is? Oh yeah, uh, Sorok in the legend oh, is my. God. Please expand. Sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you go first. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Well, it wasn't the best race of all time, <laughs> but Sergey Sorokin made it epic. He, he had some good moments and. You can't really do much in a rubbish car, especially the Williams, which is abysmal, let's be honest. And when he, you say good race and good moments, sorry. Yeah, we, uh, he just so, he showed... I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how many guts. good moments he had. I think he just caused chaos, was probably a fairer way of putting it. I think it was more just the fact that he showed guts and he was like, I'm not just going to just drive around at the back and do nothing. Yeah. He, he fought for every kind of... One of the things that makes F1 boring is the fact that everyone just sensibly thinks, oh, I'm going to let him go and then I'll save time in the pit stops later and all that. And Sorokin was like, nah. Elbows out. I'm just going to push Hartley out. off the track. And... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he drove Ali, like... Are you uh, feeling good about that? No. He drove yeah. like a champion, but the champion was Nico Rosberg and forgetting to turn right. <laughs> Straight on. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry and to all the Rosberg yeah. fans out there. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many good moments he had, if I'm honest. Uh, I think he was... Yeah, I mean, fair enough. He stuck up for himself and, you know, wasn't easy to pass. And that's great. His it was great for us to watch. Perez was good. Yeah. Yeah, he, no, to be fair, he was... Until he got... His Perez and, uh, was, fight was actually really good. Yeah. Like, going side by side and being like, uh, no. And mm. then Perez was just like, well, <laughs> have my car. <laughs> See you later. Uh, a few people actually came in with uh, three-word race reviews about Sergey, which I think is the first time that's ever happened in the history of him being in the sport, me. GLCRVLH, Sorokin for DOTD, Driver of the Day, uh, GWE Gulash, Sorokin, my man, and standby yes. underscore 404, Sorokin, best guy. Well, he was second in Driver of the Day poll. So, which he, is so he should have been. What? Which just shows how terrible the race was, really. I mean, it was more like entertainment Driver of the mm. Day. Like it got it, 16% of the vote. That's and what, what was... Uh, Verstappen won the vote. What, do you know what percentage yeah. he had? Uh, like 18 or something. So he was actually very close yeah, to winning close. Driver of the Day. Yeah. Which would have been, been hilarious. fun, wouldn't it? What were the other splits? Do we know? <sighs> 
who was third? I think Hamilton was third. Yeah. No, Alonso was third. Fair. Yeah. Which is fair. I like he, Alonso, he, yeah. Yeah, he did a good race. He did do really well. So let's talk a little bit about the actual Perez crash with, with the, the man, the myth, the legend, Sergei Sorokin. I mean, is there much to talk about, really? Uh, in, yeah. You know, it's it was very much like Perez was just not on it at all. Like after, because I was watching with, uh, we'll talk about the crash with um, with Sergey a bit later, but the, the crash originally at the start with uh, with Ocon, you were showing me the, the analysis before we started recording and oh yeah. my goodness me. Like I thought, because th- loads of people thought it was just a racing instant, but mm. he properly opened up his steering wheel and, and did not give him any room Mm-mm. whatsoever. And if you look at the onboard, Esteban's wheel is alongside, so he would have seen that with his peripheral, because drivers are great with their peripheral vision, and uh, and yeah, and opened up the steering wheel and and shafted his teammate. So, do you guys think there was anything a little bit malicious there? I guess you got to. It's like what we said before: lap one incidences. Is that the correct plural term? Incidences. Incidai. Incidai. Inc- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Incidents. I don't know why they said incidents is. <laughs> Incidai, it's fine. Um, incidents. Um, it's it's tough because you've got a lot of things going on and he was battling with Grosjean, but he... Ocon was right there. And yeah, okay, like, he, Ocon went for a... Because people were saying, like, well, was Ocon even yeah, right to go around the there? outside? Which is a ridiculous thing. But he so. went for a gap. And I think he was fair to do that. And he was more than halfway alongside Perez. Mm. So... I mean, they should have... thing is, like, Singapore is just one of the... Again, it's one of those circuits where you, if you make a mistake, you're in the wall. Or, you know, if you run out of room, you're in the wall. So m- maybe Ocon was a bit of a risky move, but I don't. I wouldn't blame him for doing it. Um, I think he was well within his rights for doing it. And as you say, like, Perez just... he Well, he just doesn't turn left. Mm. He just goes straight on. Um, yeah, I don't believe that's oversteer or anything either from no. the look of it. And... Like Davidson said when he was on the Skypad, um, he thought it was a racing incident until he saw that clip. And I'm the same, and I'm willing to sort of side with a, a, an F1 driver that knows what he's talking about yeah. in terms of a driver alongside you, because he mm. would have seen him there. Yeah, absolutely. And he, like you say, he opens his steering up, and then he's like, oh, and then goes back. And at that point, he's already bump wheels with Ocon, sends him into the wall, and they're out. Yeah, yeah, and uh, unless Perez's vision was always looking to the left and looking in that mirror, then maybe, perhaps. But then again, at the same time, you you would probably in well, obviously we're not we're not F one drivers, so we're speculating here. Would have seen or at least seen something in the corner of his eye to not open up the wheel. But in, uh, for me, Ocon absolutely deserved to be there. He he did a very it was a great move. Like mm-hmm. he was he was round the outside. He had enough space to just power out through the corner. It's not like he was risking it. Just you know, maybe you know he'd think you know his teammate. It's my teammate. Of any driver, he's probably they were gonna... looking really strong as well. They were like, yeah, they like the best of the rest. Yeah, um, and yeah, threw away such a great result, especially when Ocon's trying to get a seat as well next mm. season. And then he has this, and it's like, poor guy. Obviously, I don't think it will really impact. I think everyone knows how how good of a driver he is anyway, yeah, so it wouldn't really impact it, it. But it's just like, it's just can the guy get a break? You know, because mm. he had like thirty two or something consecutive finishes. <laughs> And now he's, now he's a bit incon- not inconsistent from his own fault, but yeah, he has. Had he's been getting quite caught up in that one incident, incident isn't he? Things, yeah. I don't know. Is that related to maybe he feels the pressure of trying to get a seat? I don't know. Uh, I guess he wouldn't really have seen his seat under threat until mm. Force India went into administration. But yeah, let's move on to the Perez and Sorokin crash now quickly. That was a slam dunk Perez fault, in my opinion. Yeah, and oh, it was yeah. interesting though, like listening to Perez's interviews afterwards. Um, I was actually just going to say, like, I was massive props to Ocon for how he handled the situation once he was out mm. of the car yeah, and this was wasn't he? this is what we were talking about in previous episodes where we spoke about how Max it was the last race right yeah, Max came up. out and he just blew up and he mm. was accusing everybody whereas like Ocon even though like he must he must firstly because of the pressures that he's under for a seat which yeah. doesn't look like it's going to be likely at all anymore um it, all that pressure and all that adrenaline and to be put out on the first lap um when you're trying to prove that you're worth you're worth your seat is that must be huge a huge amount of pressure and stress mm. and you'd expect him to blow up but he didn't and the one mm. thing that he said was i'm gonna wait till i see the analysis mm. and i'm not gonna pass gonna comment, comment yeah. until i've spoken to the team and until i've spoken to Checo. so the like, temptation for him to run and essentially blame perez because obviously 
Ocon wants that seat, mm-hmm. the temptation must have been huge. But mm-hmm. like you say, it's a but mature it's thing to do. Such a yeah, mature and it showed, Yeah, and it showed driver. that mature attitude, which again is something that Formula One teams want, is that yeah. I'm not going to comment until I've seen it. You know, and they were prodding him, they were pressing him, you know, have you got any emotions at all? Like, I'm not going to comment. And I, fair play to him. That mm-hmm. was really good. And happy birthday as well. We were recording on his birthday. So happy birthday to Esteban Ocon. Although it did feel like it smacked to me, you know, when like Mercedes was like, happy birthday, Esteban. Yeah, buy him and I a was, drive. I was like, yeah, yeah, give him a birthday present of That's a seat. Really worthy, yeah. It's I worse think... than uh, Toto's comments where he was like, none of the other teams have the ball to sign Ocon. It's like... He's your driver. Yeah, mm. yeah. Come on. Personally, I just it's put, put Bottas back in the Williams and put Ocon in that Mercedes seat. <laughs> we all know your thoughts and feelings towards Bottas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think Ocon will. I think I said it in IBR. He'll be okay. I think he will be okay. I don't. I pray to God he's not going to be another Verline where mm. you know he showed. They promise. dropped all together. Yeah, that, he, that you know they just got rid of him all completely, which is which is sad. I don't know what's going to happen to the guy, but I think yeah. Ocon has proved himself in a higher team than what Verline did. Mm. Verline was obviously m- much more of a promise and, oh, he could be great, you know, but we, they didn't really know, whereas Ocon has proved himself against Perez, who's seen as a, a very, very good driver. Obviously, he didn't have a great spell at McLaren, but Perez is, is highly rated mm-hmm. uh, amongst the drivers. So you'd like can't, to think that yeah. well, Mercedes, like, we're going to look after him and stuff. Yeah. So I can't remember a driver that, like Ocon, where everyone thinks that he's got world championship potential and he's not getting a seat you have somewhere they might be in the midfield and you go oh well they deserve to be in really in f1 maybe like a john eric Verne. but everyone with ocon as soon as like he had his first year everyone was when you interviewed rosberg i'm mm. sure ocon was one of the people that he said impressed him the most yeah. and everyone was Felix raving Rose about him was yeah. Raving thinking about yeah him. he like beat verstappen in f3 Mm. When they're both rookies, like he's an yeah, absolutely Ocon actually reckons he's better in, than Verstappen. Yeah, as he's well. an incredible driver, and he's not gonna even not even not get a top drive, not get a drive at all, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Well, we'll such a shame. We'll pray. We'll pray we'll that pray hopefully for... he'll find even a Williams seat at this at this stage. But um, pray for Ocon. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Jess, your three word race review. Well, it's kind of going. Yeah, on it, was, from... it was similar to what we were chatting about. But um, Perez ruined everything. <laughs> I think Perez, <laughs> Perez ruined so the whole race. And the championship. Not like Sorokin. <laughs> Not a lot like Sorokin. But I just think, like, you can you can put down a lot. If you, I mean, if you want to drill in this deep, you can kind of put a lot of everything that happened in that race on Perez. So Perez obviously called the sa- caused the safety car for pushing <clears throat> yeah. Ocon into the wall, which, you know, it, it, again, I'm, I'm kind of, like, doing a what-if thing here, mm. but... Vettel was on such a charge at the beginning of that race. Obviously, he had that really good battle with Max um, up until turn seven when he took over, took yeah. the place um, from him. And that was, I mean, it was well-timed as well because mm. literally as soon as he got the place, the safety car was called out. So... I think that was. Um, I think they mentioned that Charlie actually waited until all the overtakes were Finished. done. Finished. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd it been impossible which, to. Which is like... ridiculous. They did that in Spa when you had the four Vettel. wide men yeah. with the Force Indias, mm-hmm. and some people were like, "Well, why did they wait till Vettel to pass?" It's like, b- it's how do you make a call? Yeah. Of yeah. Who's in what position? It's coincidence as well. Like yeah. uh, for me, that's great. You know, I'd rather that than they're battling and then it's safety car and then it, then they have to work out well, who was the head of who. Yeah, exactly. They need to, especially if the track's clear. Like that's not where the incident is. Yeah, then it's back way yeah. back the other way, and they've got another minute and a half to get around the other. So people other complain way. about that. Yeah. I, I don't get that. But um, yes, yeah, so you said about Perez ruining everything. So yeah, yeah. so because that then put the kibosh on the entire race in terms of like it just neutralized it, mm. right? That then meant that Seb couldn't warm his t- keep his tires warm, right? So then he couldn't get a charge on Lewis who was on the better strategy or mm. whatever. So that's number 1 how he ruined the race. Okay. Number 2 again Vettel related. Yep. Vettel and Ferrari go for the uh, undercut, right? So they pit him first, yep. put him on the ultras, the faster tire because what they're hoping for is that he can do a flying lap. Mm come out and get track position, right? Who does he get stuck behind? Perez. So that completely mucked up Ferrari's strategy for which they're being super criticized for, for putting him on the wrong thing. But, you know, in that instance, and then on track like Singapore, where overtaking is like not the easiest thing in the world, how else are you going to jump apart from go for the overcut? Yeah. But so they chose that, ruined by Perez. (laughs) (laughs) 
I feel like there's going to be a new meme instead of Ericsson's fault. There's going to be Perez's, <laughs> Perez's fault. fault. Yeah, yeah. Like you so, fall over in the street, Perez's fault. <laughs> and then obviously like he had the incident with Sorokin, which is just like ruined. Perez's fault. Perez's yeah. fault. Yeah. fault, obviously. Um, and now Lewis has got a 40 point gap and potentially Perez's it's Perez's fault. Right. So there we go. Okay. Everything we can blame this entire season. If Lewis goes on to win, <laughs> if Lewis goes on to win and challenge from this point on, Perez's fault. Uh, quickly about that, the strategy of uh, Vettel and, and whatnot. I think we might get onto a bit later, but um, I am kind yeah. of joking, by the way. Yeah, no, no, no. People but take people, that completely people, no, seriously. No, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Joke. It's a joke. <laughs> the internet uh, <laughs> disclaimer. I know you, we have to put disclaimers before every joke yeah. we make in case we get like attacked. Yes, I don't think Sorokin is. The a world championship winning driver. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Is that a joke or not? I mean, it could I be. Never could joke. Be, it could be great. Um, Tire strategy. Yes, the uh, the Ferrari strategy. Obviously, mm. they're getting slated for that. They are. But at the same time, I see why they did it. Like it was very much a we have to win this race. The only way we're going to do that is if we go on a different tire. So I don't. Obviously, I don't know their calculations and whatnot. And obviously, he got stuck behind Perez. But I don't feel like Vettel maybe did as good of an outlap as maybe they expected because otherwise why would he have got stuck they'd also not had any time to test that tire on long distance because of what happened in on friday yeah yeah, yeah. so they they didn't know if the that's the thing because that was down to them bringing one set again wasn't it weird they both did because hamilton only just made it through qualifying Mm -hmm. which is crazy to think of the weekend he had that he was like like two tenths from going out of q1 which is Mm -hmm. mad but yeah they both got the tire allocations wrong didn't they so interesting but yeah yet again ferrari bringing the wrong i mean yeah i get what you mean about them they had to go for it but it it does just it screws them a bit because everyone is right on their back again and especially after they did that controversial press release afterwards talking about how boring the race was. It, it screams like the entire team is just losing the plot over this championship now. Mm. Yeah. It's an interesting one. I, I personally don't think they're bottling. I just think they're, well, I mean, for that one in particular, that instance in particular, I can see why they did it. And, you know, it just didn't work out for them. You know, they're at a stage yeah. now where desperation is kicking in. You know, if, I think if Hamilton was to finish second to Vettel every single race from here on in, he'll he'll lose the championship by one point. But when is Hamilton not yeah. going to win one of the next six? I thought it was Vettel. If Vettel wins every race from now on out he'll and win Lewis by comes point. second. Oh, I heard he wouldn't win by two. Yeah, Vettel wins by two. Oh, two. Yeah. Okay, one or two. Um, so, yeah. So, And you know, as we've seen, means. like DNFs happen yeah um you know who's to say they don't both take each other out yeah. or something like that's the thing like it's really sad to hear everyone just go oh well that's it yeah championship over like i know i joked about it with perez but like i don't perez's fault. we've still got six races to go guys yeah like still got six races to go anything i heard happen. that perez might cancel the next six races <laughs> 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 yeah he's, he's gonna say stay just sitting he or wants something. the finale in mexico so they're cancelling all the others <laughs> <laughs> going to Mexico, that's it. We're, we're chopping off uh <laughs> chopping off brazil and yeah. abu dhabi uh no, finally on perez my three-word race review was ocon over perez so we all kind of had a nice not well you had sorokin but it was all kind of linked in with perez or ocon or force india so uh, yeah I, I just think ocon should have a seat over perez so anyway enough about the midfield onto the championship you were saying about actually hayden three two one three two one zero one so do you think the championship is pretty much over you say no it's still very much up for grabs and Lem's Chris says, "Do you think the Vettel could still win the championship?" No, no, I don't think either. No. Uh, personally, he's, but I then think he's absolutely defeated in that. Race. Yeah, his demeanour's yeah. like so down at the moment, isn't it? A, a bit like Ricardo. Uh, you know, he, you he's see, done as well. There was an awesome shot that I think it was on Channel Four when they did their race replay, and you know how in Singapore they've got the clear visors and you could see, and there was a slow mo replay of Vettel after qualifying after he just set his qualifying time mm. and probably seen that Hamilton was six tenths and he like he looks frustrated like he closes his eyes and he like sighs and like puts his head down yeah and I was just like that is an incredible like picture yeah to show like and then he he didn't hide it on the podium either he him and Ferrari they just look like they've got well, nothing yeah, left I mean, they've got the best car like they've had an amazing exactly. championship and they've, they've just had got the best car answer, that's the main or, thing and yeah <laughs> Again, we, we kind of say, you know, we go on about Ferrari having the best car, the best car, but at the end of the day, we don't really know. I, I obviously, free practice can say one thing, but like how much of it is Hamilton, 
you know driving the best he's ever driven and how much of it is that Bottas is just a little bit crap and <laughs> and not showing how you know, how good the Mercedes really is because Bottas is nowhere now yeah it's which weird, is isn't it? I, I, oh, he he's so inconsistent it is it's yeah. like he has good tracks and bad tracks which I think is not you put what a Formula t- One tweet out about it that was he's gone from do you, do you put a tweet out about that oh, he's, yeah. gone from, he's gone from oh wow like he's actually challenging Hamilton and then you realize that's Hamilton probably not really trying at the start of the season or when he's not in his yeah mindset and now he's just I think I said something like, and... you know, he used to be a championship contender and now he can't even lap Hulkenberg. So it's like, it, he's yeah. very much fallen from grace and fallen out of uh, the grace from my my standards and, and kind of And now you're looking like, how has he not won a did. race this year? Yeah, like, he's had so many opportunities mm. and he's in the, like a really good car. But I, I stand by the fact Hamilton is absolutely like on fire at the moment. Like he is ridiculously good like qualifying race i bet jess you're you're very happy to see see uh see hamilton do as, as well as he is i mean it's, it's not just that he's he's launching clothing brands and, and people were saying before how you know he's not able to manage all of this and then racing but i feel like he's got the perfect balance now he's literally just living the dream mm. like he's doing everything he's ever wanted plus like he's winning races and i just don't think like you can't criticize <clears throat> the guy for not being focused on Formula One when he's yeah. putting in qualifying laps like he did. Um, it's hilarious that like, everyone would jump on that though. Yeah. If, if if he had a bad race in Singapore, it'd be, oh, why was he over in Tommy China Hilfiger launching his whatever. Tommy Hilfiger range? And it's like, actually, he's gone from Monza, won the race, gone over to China, launched his fashion range, gone out, set one of arguably the best pole position laps of all time, and then won the race and got a 40-point lead in the championship. It kind of mic drop weekend yeah. kind of thing really and it's always funny as well because you know i i almost implore more of the drivers to be doing what lewis is doing i mean granted i don't know if they've quite got the star power that he has no. but you know it, it would be amazing for f1 if more drivers could transcend motorsport and go yeah. into other areas is, to bring yeah. in more fans if you look at like football players and soccer Soccer football, not American football. Well, American football players do the same thing, right? Mm. They don't just play sport. They're ambassadors. They they do sign up and do like fashion lines or whatever. Like mm. Deli Ali is has, has his own like fashion partnership. With... I only know him for his eye thing, to be honest. <laughs> 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 Can you do it, Matty? Nope, absolutely not. No? I, yeah, I'm I'm shown, and every time I just don't know. I just <laughs> I'm not doing it on ga- camera either. So yeah, carry on. It's fine for audio though; they can't see you. Can't yeah, see everyone you else can. Hi. Slapping yourself in the face. It's fine. Jess is like, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> well, I can. But... Didn't watch your Instagram story twenty times trying to understand how the hell you do it. <laughs> cool, it's fine. Um, but yeah, like, so why why does does Hamilton get so much stick about it mm. when it's actually a good thing for the sport? And he's shown that he can balance both worlds, and and so yeah, just I mean, it is funny yeah. how in other sports it is fairly normal, especially yeah. like following other like footballers on instagram and stuff i see stuff from them all the time but because hamilton is the only one doing it in Why formula doing, one it's yeah. like oh wh- what are you doing why aren't you like in your team gear doing a really boring pr sponsor <laughs> which he also is doing which he also is yeah like, and already i saw like this morning <clears throat> he flew out to thailand he's in thailand doing a puma shoot so like the guy doesn't get a break, and yet he can still put in stuff like that. And he's got so, a private jet. He gets. I mean, that is also sleep. true. <laughs> and he's got a lot of people looking after him. I'm sure he yeah. gets amazing massages and whatever to make sure that he's like not too jet lagged or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a he lives a privileged life, mm. but he's doing he's making the most of it. He's doing a lot with his privilege. So, why not? And something about Hamilton that uh, I think it was Brundle said on the commentary, and and it kind of scared me a little bit, is that Schumacher's record is looking very, very Touchable. fragile. Yeah, I thought that you know? during the race. He's like what seventy sixty nine wins. Sixty nine wins. Sixty nine wins. So he's only what is it twenty two away from ninety one, which is what Schumacher yeah, had. That's only he he's he's in F one for two years. Two so he years won seven this year. Probably won more. Yeah, well, it depends what the Mercedes like, obviously. Yeah, exactly. but, you know, and you're thinking, you know, that was untouchable, especially mm-hmm. us growing up and anyone of kind of our age, you know, Schumacher, seven world titles, you know, that's, that could be, yeah. Lewis could get to six and then be like, oh, I'll do one more season. And then he'll win seven and be like, okay, I might do one more. And he'll probably sign one year contracts maybe until he becomes the greatest. But it's actually quite funny because it's similar to Schumacher's career where if you think that when Hamilton joined Formula One in 2007, Every newspaper was like, this guy's the next Schumacher. Like, if mm. he's going to win in his rookie year, how many titles is he going to win? And then actually what happened was Vettel won four. 
Hamilton had only won one and everyone was like, oh, Vettel's going to get seven. Yeah. And if you think before 2013, Hamilton's there with one world championship yeah. and four years later, we're talking about him Fifth having one. 69 yeah. wins, the most pole positions ever, winning every single in every single Grand Prix now, I think, mm-hmm. on the calendar. Yeah. yeah, it's mad. It's mind-boggling. And I think, yeah, it's it saddens me to say, but it looks very possible. Um, it's weird. I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of people are the same. I don't know what it is about it, but Hamilton, as much as he's an incredible driver, you don't, you can't, I can't, for me, because obviously I'm a Shumi fanboy, but also I can't compare the two. Like I don't feel like no. Hamilton. Oh, no. I don't think they are comparable. Sh- I don't, yeah. I don't think anyone is really like, People always try and go, oh, well, this guy's like this. And even even the new guys like Verstappen and Ocon, people are always mm. saying like, oh, Verstappen crashed, but Senna crashed and all this kind of stuff. It's just yeah. different eras, like different drivers are going to have. The sport's di- nothing yeah. like it was when no. yeah. when Schumacher was racing or especially yeah. when like the likes of Senna were racing. Yeah, exactly. Like it's completely different. It's like even when you look at the stats, like how many more races have to be won or have been won versus like i mean i think you who was bringing up stats about um fangio and stuff like he won he won m- more percentage of yeah, the grand like prix than he entered but, but he was... only raced x yeah. amount of times and there so, were like six races in a year exactly yeah. so it's like you almost can't compare like you'd have to do a lot of maths which maybe yeah. somebody will do at some point to have like comparable stats mm. but i mean people still get really butt hurt by people you taking other people's records them, yeah. like i know you get a little bit touchy about schumacher's records <laughs> oh, being absolutely. beaten, and whenever whenever they are done people chime in with yes but when schumacher was racing it was mm. blah 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 or whatever like it, yeah. and it's so it's funny twitter voice <laughs> twitter voice yeah <laughs> <laughs> it always voice. has to come out once uh, once a podcast. with an extra sprinkling of salt <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's 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 just an interesting interesting times and i think yeah, just to kind of over, sort of sum that up mm. uh, for people that don't think Hamilton is a great, is they are deluded. Well, you to, don't have to like him. No, yeah, you don't have no, to no, like no. him. You don't have to you don't like, have to like him, either of them. Yeah, I'm know, the same Vettel's with Schumacher because you liked Schumacher. Yeah, I was a Damon Hill fan, then I was a Montoya fan. So <laughs> Schumacher, but but now looking back on the stuff Schumacher did, I'm like he is for me like the, the greatest ever, mm. um, and. From my own, like looking at that now, I can really appreciate it. But yeah. people don't like to say people are the greatest when they're still in the sport, do they? It's That's a bit the raised tinted glasses. The thing I always think about as well is like <clears throat> how much we talk about all the drivers on the current grid, but who are going to be the ones that are remembered? Mm. Like, and who are going to be the ones Sorokin. that? Sorokin. <laughs> Sorokin. A legend, Sorokin. Well, Perez. He will go down. <laughs> Ruining Perez's spot. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Because <laughs> it's funny to us now to think about the ones that we forget. But uh, you know. Yeah when you talk about people that Schumacher raced against, like half of them you won't ever mm. remember or they'll come they'll come back into conversation like, Oh yeah, Kartikeyan. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> He did not race He Kartikeyan. did not race Kartikeyan, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. like even though they they're not I mean Kartikeyan wasn't even that Never long forget ago. Forget the cucumber, come on. I mean, Marcus Winkelhock. <laughs> hundred hundred would ever forget that record of leading races he competed in. Well, there, there you go. Better than now Schumacher he's the and great. Hamilton. Yeah, he's the ultimate great. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just interesting. And then that's the thing. Like that's why I think you know, it's funny how many drivers on the grid currently have been labelled as world world championship material. Mm. But yeah. how many of them will ever get even close to a world championship? Yeah, Probably exactly none of them. And there's a lot more analysis, you know, these days, isn't it, compared to the Schumacher era? Everyone's yeah. talking, everyone's on social media. We didn't have that. We were just sat at the TV going, oh, he's winning a lot. You know, we'd maybe tell our mum or something and that's it. You know, whereas this is, it's overanalyzed almost, yeah. isn't it, all the comparisons. But, you know, it, it, I, th- I just think it's a shame because I, I, I understand, you know, I'm not a massive Hamilton fan. I don't like the way that when he loses, he's quite the crybaby. But, like, I, I can still appreciate that he, the, I am witnessing history, you know, and it's yeah, something yeah, that yeah. people look back on and go, Lewis Hamilton was one of the greatest drivers ever and Sebastian Vettel was one of the greatest drivers ever. Yeah. Do you remember when Vettel, you know, may have thrown away the championship in 2018? You know, like, you yeah. look back on this and go, yeah. Geez. What, and I guess what every, era that was, yeah. every, every era that comes into, into play when we're talking about, like, who's going to be the greatest of all time, you always wonder, like, will this ever happen again? Mm. Like, yeah. we, we've kind of had periods where a team seems to be very dominant so i guess maybe the next era is going to be 2021 yeah when we get another major rule change and one team over another is going to nail it 
and then we'll have the next iteration of, of greats. And mm. maybe it's someone who's already on the calendar. Maybe it's going to be a rookie. Like, we don't know. Yeah. But that's mm. what kind of, like, it's always weird for me to think about. Yeah, it is weird. Like, you know, five years down the line, Charles Leclerc might be a world champion. Shout yeah. out ninth place. Good job, Charles. Right, let's move on. <laughs> Quick uh, uh, drive of the day for the Singapore Grand Prix. Moving back to that. Remember the Singapore Grand Prix we were talking about? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my drive of the day. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, no, why did I put myself on this? Charles Leclerc, he's back in the points. Two points. No, don't you shake your head, Alistair. Um, great drive. Apart from Charles, who would be your driver of the day? Uh, I don't know. There wasn't really any standout drives. Alonso was really joking? good. Are you joking? Yeah. You shut the... <laughs> <laughs> that was a strange noise coming out of your face, uh, Tommy. What? Um, leaking out your face? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leaking out my cheeks. <laughs> <clears throat> um, oh, I'd, yeah, it's difficult. I haven't really an- fully analysed it, but I think Alonso did a great drive in seventh. Um, I don't want to go for the standard Verstappen's or whatever. I didn't think he drove it was, that it well. It was Verstappen, nah. definitely. I mean, he did outperform Ricardo quite well when he'd had boxer neutrals. Okay, fine, Verstappen. It was Verstappen. Yeah. No, I mean, there's not a definitive answer, Tommy. Yeah, this is there opinion. is. It, it was Verstappen. Fine. Well, shock you going for Verstappen. Uh, any any more words on that or just Verstappen? He was also in qualifying. He drove a really Actually, mature fair, yeah, race. Okay, he, fair, uh, yeah, got back past Vettel without ramming him into the wall, which he might have done uh, Actually, a few yeah. No, yeah, no, races ago. More. Um, yeah. He got behind Lewis at one point when Sorokin, the legend, blocked him a bit. And, you know, he made an attempt, but he that didn't, do, he didn't at least, like, I mean, he, he might have argued that no he could space. have yeah. gone for it. Yeah, but he's the kind of driver that when he was going through his crash phase, mm. he might have rammed into the back of Hamilton and ruined his race. And he... Made an attempt, didn't get past, settled for yeah, second. I think the and, Vettel one you know, was, he's, yeah. was the most, uh, sort of, I was like quite impressed. It was the Vettel uh, yeah. incident at the start. You know, he could have easily steamed up the inside. There yeah. were two Vettel incidents. Uh, yeah, exactly. One at the yeah. start and one when yeah, yeah. Um, he came back out came the pits. Came out the pits, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, didn't do a Perez he, and straighten the wheel. And yeah, he positioned the car beautifully. And I think, obviously, the, the first one was kind of just testing his patience and being like right okay it's fine we've got a strategy you know and yeah. he drove a really good first stint as the the team said and yeah no fair enough all right okay i'll allow for stappen um just i think for the first time ever we're all in agreement with who driver of the day is i will also Perez. say for stappen oh. yeah yeah because <laughs> he ruined everything um no yeah i think for stappen yeah for stappen for stappen but yes you're a for stappen, for stappen. Yeah. but i am a for stappen hater no that that's the drive i've been waiting for this entire time yeah he was like, awesome like he was yeah, just yeah. like you said like his... and of all the places as well like singapore i like... know where where last year it was a bit of a he got sandwiched um yeah yeah but that wasn't his fault though. yeah i think i just agree with all you guys he 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 drove a very good race. Yeah, that was that was the driving of a world champion that I've been waiting and for. And shout out to Hamilton as well. He did a really good. Yeah, you know he was that quality spent that. at the end of that more ex- race as well. Wasn't I guess you more were. expected Ruined. it from Hamilton, didn't you? Because he yeah. has just been driving so well. Yeah, he, he was unbeatable, and he. He, he, uh, he also kind of maintained the pace really well at the start of the race you know obviously it's not ideal to <laughs> 10 watch 10 seconds yeah slower. it's not that ideal to watch but like it's, that's the kind of thing you have to have that patience and then be like right bolt it now and you know he stuck to a strategy and he, and he did well did you hear in the cool down room um, Max like called him out for it yeah he was like you're going really slow or you, you maintain I think he just went oh yeah well obviously you maintain the and he was like, you yeah. maintain the pace and he was like um yeah <laughs> it was funny <laughs> that obviously, obviously uh, Monaco uh, version 2 also uh, that was you nearly better... my uh, three word race <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, like it kind of benefited Max anyway to like manage the tires, and like you said, because yeah. he, he he drove a really good first stint, and then the second stint was the same. So, right, let's run through the WTF one podcast predictions. I don't know why I said WTF one. Can Welcome. I ask? Can I just interject really quickly? Yes. Perez's penalty. He did get penalty points. He he did. He did. Oh, yeah. thank God for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> do you think it was? But do you think it was like good enough? Because as well, in, like he got he got a drive through. Yeah, he was very lucky. Yeah, to only get a drive through, which people didn't ask, affect him yeah, some, at all. Some people were asking that he should have got black flagged, uh, which I think is a bit extreme. But he should have got a grid uh, drop for the next race. Yeah, because yeah, he, he was sixteenth or seventeenth anyway, and he got drive through. Yeah. Well, what did he do? You know, ridiculous. Was that was that? Or were you going to say more? Yeah, I just think like yeah. that was a pretty big like talking point. So yeah, sorry, no, we've had a run now. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, and it was Perez's fault. I hope we got a close up on that face. <laughs> um, Zoom. Yeah, I'll so, uh, <laughs> right, podcast predictions. Uh, the race will run to two-hour time limit rather than laps. No, oh, Jess. That was me. Oh, I was you. Was oh, I thought that was Jess. I was, was you. Um, the, Fer- the, Fer- 
the Ferris wheel. The <laughs> Ferris wheel will be turned into a Heineken advert. Did it? No. 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 I was really Gutted. disappointed. Missed out. They clearly don't watch the podcast, otherwise they would have used that. Mercedes will qualify behind both Ferraris and Red Bulls. Oops. Well, Not Bottas. Correct. Mm. Not correct, no. Yeah. Well, Bottas qualified behind Verstappen, so yeah, kind of, but yeah, not both Hamilton, Mercedes. Really. Uh, Verstappen will get pole. No. Almost. Bottas becomes a roadblock again. Mm. Kind of. I guess. He blocked, I, yeah, he he blocked, blocked Raikkonen. Raikkonen. Yeah. And uh, Ricardo. Yeah. Charles Leclerc will score points. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone will crash at the corner before the Anderson, Anderson Bridge. Damn it. No, someone did after they. Who was, who was that? I don't know. Was it? Who was it? Huh? When? Sh- Charles Leclerc. Uh, oh. No, that's not that part of the track. It was. It was... After oh the yeah, Anderson it was. Bridge. Oh yeah, is that Anderson Bridge? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'll give you something, Ali. Stop <laughs> nodding at the fact Charles Leclerc did something wrong. Brendan Hartley's rubbish. A driver swap <laughs> will happen before the race. No. Nope. New. Yeah. Someone will say there's no race like it on the calendar. Well, hang on. Technically, Maldonado is driving Perez's car, so. <laughs> Could argue that. <laughs> <laughs> Te- well, that technically? Techni- technically, Leclerc and Raikkonen have swapped teams, just not, okay. just not now. <laughs> As in, like, they swap before the race. So you're trying to say you were just kind of open-ended. I think I'm ra- uh, yeah, okay, you're going to sip some wow. water for that. Wow. Okay, right. Uh, each, we each get... We each mm-hmm. get Do you want to start again? Eight, eight, eight. We, oh, I'm a seal. Each get two predictions <laughs> for next time and then three from you guys, fans. I don't know why I said fans. <laughs> that was in brackets. Oh, my okay. God. If we write anything on there, will you just read it out? Yeah, I'm like uh, uh, Anchorman. <laughs> I'm <it>? Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, can you give me your two predictions if you remember them? I've forgotten them. Bottas will win the race again. Yeah, I think Bottas. Which is something will win. I also said. So could you not copy me, please? Even though we didn't. Well, I said it first other. now, so it's my uh, prediction. Well, you have to think of another one. Oh no, I said I gave three, so you just yeah, took mine yeah, away. Just... So that was okay. So, that's a joint thing. Anyway. Yeah, Bottas. Bottas will win. Another one. But I think. Um... Oh no! Yeah, no. I just think Bottas is going to win. Um... And Kvyat. They'll replace Kvyat. Grandstand. Grandstand. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely think the Kvyat Grandstand will be replaced by the Sorokin Grandstand. You think they'll change the name? I think they'll change the name. And I think there'll be a, one of those massive... Do you remember they they usually have a massive like image of him on the side of the grandstand? Yeah. They should have a statue like a... The legend Sorokin. Sorokin statue. Like a yeah. statue. Yeah, statue, yeah. I mean, maybe they'll do it for Sorokin. They should do. It's only fair. After his last after race, his, I mean, after his come last on. Drive. I mean, At he finished 19th statue. and two laps down. It was a great drive. But he, he gave us entertainment. Exactly. Tommy. Uh, Sorokin will get points and do donuts while waving a Russian flag. I mean, he's not going to get either of those, but sure. We well, might get a Russian flag. We might get a Russian flag. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, Ferrari will leave Kimi out on his tyres for so long that he'll have to get on the radio and ask if he's allowed to pit. Then <laughs> why do you think that is? <laughs> Just because they'll forget he's in the race. And <laughs> Vettel will probably Aww. be leading and they'll Just go, like oh yeah, Kimi. <laughs> yeah, Vettel and Seven Seb. Seb. <laughs> Oh, yeah. brilliant. Okay, and my two uh, predictions are track extending will be a problem. So I think people will be track extending everywhere. And then more than three cars will cut the second corner, which is technically the first. Well, not technically. Just in the race? Yeah, so the first lap. The start. In the yeah, fa- yeah the start, sorry. Um, yeah, I think three will we'll go through that little bit where they have to go around the bollard. Cause that corner is horrific, like that tiny kink. isn't it? Oh, it's dreadful. It's the whole te- track is dreadful, really. It's not great for like, yeah. racing. It's just all 90 degree corners. Yeah. It's weird though, because that, cause that corner does not lend well into huge straight. 20 cars have to filter into this little lane. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, let's put a 90 degree. And then people just turn, straight line it. And then everyone just goes over it. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a BTEC Valencia, really, isn't it? It's, uh... <laughs> BTEC <laughs> Valencia. Uh, and wow. fan predictions we've got three. At Callum, under- Callum Moore, underscore 12, a world championless podium. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Sorokin. Uh, at S666 KIE. I don't know why I said key. Uh, Kvyat, annou- Kvyat, not Kvyat. Kvyat, because everyone's like Kvyat, not Kvyat. Uh, announced as a Toro Rosso driver for next year. Yep, heard that's going to happen. That'd be insane. At Matty Muck91, it'll actually be an eventful race. Let's hope so. That's very. That's not measurable. Not I don't. I don't like that prediction. Well. Well, we'll do a rate the race, and then if it rate if it the goes, race, if it goes above, it's a new half. section. Nice, like it. Quick talk about the twenty twenty one concept cars. Beautiful. Great. Yeah. Concept I think, three. Yeah. I like them. Absolutely. Concept three is the one. Concept three. Yeah. Is. Oh. It's not the one. Yeah. Get it. Nice. It's. It's. It's, it's, uh, it's the three. It's nice. Um, we've also got at Torben Sadeak and Andrew Watwood 
one oh one and more. What? You're literally just reading everything on yeah, that sheet. Yeah, I know, but what what is they said what did they talk say? about the 2021 concept right. cars. Okay, and we have. You can tell you're tired because you've, you've you've left me on a whim there with that one. I but, just um, thought I'd ruin. Ma- your day. Matthew, we just thought you'd like make sense of it rather than yeah, just yeah, read everything sure. out like actually, a no, mindless. I just kind of like slowly moving towards Tommy to kind of interject. <laughs> um, so yeah, 2021 <laughs> concept cars look awesome. Let us know what you think in the comments Don't section below. Don't you think as well. they look a little bit like Formula E cars? No, they look better than Formula E cars. I mean, I agree, but they look a little little like gen 2 formula e cars they look they've taken gen 2 and gone we're gonna make them better they've gone gen 3 the halo actually looks <laughs> decent the halo they've does look cool and look, the livery designs that people have done look sick the renault yeah. one in particular yeah and porsche as well wasn't there was a porsche yeah, one, porsche one. Um, which is interesting as well to think about like in 2021 if there's going to be any new sort of car manufacturers joining red cool. bull maybe leaving i imagine they'll probably leave yeah. if they don't start winning soon yeah, I heard that. Because it's going to be... What's the point for them? Interestingly, uh, again, we're kind of like running a little bit over and Ali's about to Ali's murder gonna us. Lose. <laughs> Just but, say Harley um, a few times and I saw on I saw on Ted's notebook that um, Renault was saying that Red Bull cooked the engines because by the sides of the cars, um, most of the teams are running... I'm moving my water so that I can like demonstrate on the car. For audio um, listeners, she has two hands in front of her. Two hands in front of me. <laughs> so you know where they're She's named? She's now lifting them. Okay, Karen. <laughs> audio description. Go on then, what's this? <laughs> Using her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Where is this going? Calm, I don't know. Down. You tell so me. Where, the, where, their name, where their name <laughs> sits. What are you even saying, Tommy? Sorry, go Tommy, on. shut up. <laughs> where, their, where their name is on the side of the, on the side pods yep. of the car. Below that section, most of the teams are running vents to cool the engines down, especially in Singapore, because it's crazy hot. Mm. Red Bull covered theirs. So they didn't have that extra cooling thing. So they cooked their engines. So Renault are saying... It's their fault. Kind of your own fault, dudes. Mm. For Max's neutral... Uh, flipping mm. into neutral Which didn't problems. affect him too much, for, fortunately, for him, wasn't it? Especially that... that mm. Well, the pit exit was like a little yeah, bit a little sketchy, bit, wasn't it? A little bit yeah. wavy. But, uh, but yeah, that's good. clearly anyway, they're, yeah. uh, they're just trying to push for any kind of result. And they're like, ah, just block it. If it blows up, it blows up. We're not going <laughs> to yeah. win the championship if we win a race. Is that right? You think that's about right? Cool. Yeah, why not? Awesome. All right. Well, we are done. Uh, Ali's going to be raging. Five minutes over. He's uh, giving You're me not going to scroll down. One word from, about Hartley, just before we go. Uh, robbed by Magnussen. Oh, my God. What for 17th? Oh, what did he do? Oh, poor you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes yes okay fantastic well thank you very much for watching this uh singaporean gp singaporean gp podcast um thank you guys oh this one oh so okay well why is that one pointing at me ali okay we're having a camera dispute uh last words before we go tommy goodbye <laughs> <laughs> uh, jess any other word other than goodbye i don't think i can top that so we'll leave on that. <laughs> we'll leave it on that note well thank you very much for watching we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Oh my god, bye bye! <laughs> That's like the on actually, yeah. all over again. <laughs> Beep! Goodbye! <laughs> oh dear. Fantastic. That's my moment. I won't do it.